As a small business owner, craft shows, craft fairs, craft markets, whatever you want to call them, are a primary source of my biggest sales. With it no longer being the season for such events, it's time to pivot into what will work in the off season. Let's grow our businesses. Hey, hello, hey y'all. My name is Ari. I love to talk about all things small business, entrepreneurship, pop-ups, and things of the sort. I love to say that I am a mama by day and a small business owner by nap time. And if you guessed it, it's not nap time. My husband's home watching a baby girl. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the past five months, I've been doing craft fairs and pop-up events just locally in my city. I've done seven events so far in the last five months, and my experience has been overall great. It has been the driving force of all my sales for my business, and it has allowed me to just meet different vendors, different customers, all within my community that have just poured love into my small business. So with it being a slow season, I'm a little scared, but scratch that, I'm not scared. I am extremely motivated to make this off season a profitable season. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you all today is how I plan on making this off season a great season, a season of profit, a season of growing, a season of just elevating my business while having this break from craft fairs and pop-up shows and markets of the sort. Getting right into it, we're gonna talk about online sales and just having a, a website. <laughs> With the website, you are exposed to so many people. Depending on how well you market your products or what advertising you pay for, you can have a huge customer base. I highly suggest that you think about getting some type of website or online platform to where you can sell your items. I personally use Etsy and it has worked really well for me right now. I know a lot of people talk about just the different fees that Etsy has and I'm not gonna lie, looking into those fees, they can be a lot. But for me personally, I would rather pay those additional fees than have to worry about like my own offsite ads or using another site to create shipping labels and things like that. So for me right now, I'm utilizing all of Etsy's features and of course I'm paying the fees that come with it, but it's worth it to me. I know that there are so many other just websites out there that you can create and that don't have these fees, but what I've seen at the end of the day, it all ends up adding up to be around the same. So you have to kind of count your wins and your losses and just really sit down with yourself and decide on what you think is worth it or not. A website that a lot of people use or just a platform that a lot of people use is Shopify. I've heard a ton of good things about Shopify and if I'm right, they allow you to just like customize your website so you can make it more of your own. And it has a lot of the features that Etsy does. I need to do uh, basically like an Etsy versus Shopify type sit down with myself and just write out the pros and cons of each because if I'm being honest, I might switch over to Shopify. If you use Shopify and you've had good experiences with them or a good experience with them, leave in the comments your experience so I can think about getting a Shopify. So during this off season, another way that I'm going to be making money is by allowing my products to be in boutiques and shops. If you've been to my channel before, you know that I have had products like earrings and the sort at a boutique locally for about two months now. And I haven't told you all yet, but I recently just put my items in another shop. That is a huge accomplishment. With it being the slow season, it's gonna really work in my favor due to these shops having a lot of foot traffic. So with your products being in shops and boutiques, it allows more eyes on your product as opposed to everything just sitting inventory in your home. So I would suggest that you reach out to local shops, boutiques, places where you can see your work at and that have your ideal customer. I highly suggest you go to these, my baby is just, Nora. <laughs> So I highly suggest that you go to different boutiques and shops locally, or even look on their website online to see if they are accepting small businesses to basically like sell their products in their store. With boutiques and shops, they will either offer consignment or wholesale options or both. With consignment, a lot of people like to do a split. It is kind of like a 
it's like a trade almost, but not really. So for me, the consignments that I do, I do consignment at both the shop that I just recently got into and a boutique. So for the boutique, I have a 70-30 split. As a designer, I receive 70% of the profit of the sales and the um, boutique receives 30%. It could seem like a loss to people if you're not pricing your items as they need to be priced. And I can get into how I price my items if you all want me to. So leave in the comments if that's something that you wanna see, just me breaking down how I come up with my overall prices, how I determine my wholesale costs and my retail prices. As I was saying, with selling at boutiques and shops, you will receive more exposure of your products, which is good. You might not be making as much money as you would at craft fairs or just pop-up shops, but this is still exposure to your community, letting them know that you are a local business. And a suggestion that I have is just creating a meet the maker type display so people can know that you are local. Because more times than not, when people see you products in stores, they automatically don't assume that it's local, especially if it's in like a boutique or a shop that doesn't mostly buy things from local businesses. So for me personally, having a meet the maker sign and just identifying that, hey, like I am local and these are handmade or whatever is special about you and your product, put that in your meet the maker form so people can just get to know you a little better, want to support you. This meet the maker sign basically acts like how you would act if you were at a craft fair or at a pop-up shop. So I don't know if you all have had people ask about you when you're actually selling at your shows, but this meet the maker sign will kind of take the form of representing you. So write this out and just include things that you want people to know about you and hopefully get them to buy from you. When choosing a shop or boutique, I think it's really important to see what type of client the boutique or shop brings in. Are they your ideal customer? Are they going to want to buy from you? Can you see this consumer group that buys from this shop or boutique buying items that you create? These are all things that are extremely important to how well your sales will be. Next is online wholesale opportunities. I personally have not yet started this, but it is something that I'm willing to do here soon. I spoke to a local small business owner who owns a shop and what she does is she purchases things online wholesale from people around the world, I think. The website that my friend was telling me about is called FAIR. So what this website does is it allows makers to sell their things wholesale to shops that aren't necessarily local. With online wholesale opportunities, I think it's really important to have just your brand established. Like you will want to have really good packaging. You want to be able to have your branding how it needs to be because more times than not these people are buying your items in bulk to sell and display in their store so you won't necessarily be able to set up your display on your own these people are buying from you so they should be able to just automatically put your things your items on the shelves so packaging is really important and just overall branding for example i can show you all what i'm currently using as far as just my earring backdrops and my bookmark backdrops this is something that i once didn't have but i thought that it was extremely important whenever i started selling at the boutique because with selling your items at stores you want your brand to look cohesive you want it to look elevated so people will have a higher chance of buying your product People don't want things to look like they're handmade or homemade or whatever. Like they want things to look polished. They want it to look clean. I got these off of Canva and these are my earring blanks as well as my bookmark blanks. So what they have here is just my business name and then it's so blurry. So it's my business name and then I have my Instagram and I have my website below. And it's a really simple chic design. It's not overbearing too much. And it's a really good card. It's not flimsy by any means. And I think that, you know, this has ultimately helped me to have better sales because it just looks like my business is quality like it is. I designed and made this on Canva, which is super easy, super convenient. And I was able to print straight from Canva 
great. Canva is definitely my now go-to. Um, and I'm honestly not mad at the quality by any means. With this simple blank, card blank, I use the business card feature to get the ideal size that I wanted. And what I'll be doing to make this an actual earring card is using this puncher here and punching holes into my earring blanks, into my blank card. It works, it's super easy, it's super convenient. If you can see here, this is what it will look like after I punch the holes in and it allows me to just utilize it as an earring card. And as far as just using it as a bookmark card, what I do is I take my bookmark and then I place it on my card. And then with a sticker, I just hold it in place and it looks super classy. It looks nice, clean, it looks professional. This is an example of just some earrings on the card. And I had this off to the side just because the, the hole was off centered and so was the earring base. So it was just kind of like an example piece for me to just reference, but this is what it looks like. The off season can definitely be hard, but in the off season, I think it's really important to just sit back and try to think about how you can elevate your brand whenever the actual season of craft shows comes back. For example, how can you elevate your display? How can you elevate your branding? How can you make more people come to your booth? So although this is the off season and these are helpful tips on how to be successful during the off season, I think in the off season, we also need to focus on how we can be more present and more elevated at our craft shows coming up. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video and you wanna see more kind of similar content, I will leave a playlist on the side. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later, bye.